All right, so I've been kind of wanted. I wanted to make a video originally talking about Steve Ursig, who's fighting this weekend at UFC 295. He's fight. He was supposed to fight, I believe, Matt Schnell, who's a top 15 lightweight. But now Matt Schnell pulled out, so now it's Alessandro Costa. And I was like, oh shit, that's just a free win for uh, Steve Ursig right now. And I do, I do think Steve Ursig is really good, and I think he has potential to be a top 10 guy, but this video is going to be, like, to talk about that and, like, kind of gauge how good I think he is, because, you know, I think a lot of people agree that he's pretty good. He might be a little under the radar right now, but, you know, a lot of people were talking about him after his uh, win on the Nunez versus Aldana card, and, you know, so I was just going to make a video of that, but, you know, I was kind of putting off of that, and I'm kind of glad I did, because then I saw a video which was uh, Lucas Tracy MMA's uh, UFC 295 picks. And, you know, it's it's a Lucas Tracy video. It's him just repeating these catchphrases that he has that nobody likes. Him kind of just copying the MMA guru, if I'm being honest. I know we all kind of are, but, like, he, he, he steals a lot of his content. But, you know, he it, it was overall not a bad video, but he started the video off... Uh, very badly. The main thing I remember was uh, him talking about the Steve Ursig versus Alessandra Costa fight. And he just, I, in my opinion, he showed his bias against not only, he. it's obvious he doesn't like these uh, Eastern European fighters. And, and he, he hates them. Now, the difference between, like me, I don't really... I don't like the fan base of them because it's like you have to worship these guys. And yeah, that's annoying. But what's annoying is these people who devaluate anything. Uh, if you, someone has an Eastern European name, they're immediately overrated like that. And Lucas Tracy is very well known for that. In my opinion, he has shown it time and time again. It's And he's not the only one to do it. I've done it a couple times. But, you know, I also matured and I'm 18 years old. This man's in his 20s looking like he's fucking 38, and he hasn't grown up yet. But let's start with the Steve Ursig thing. Before I kind of build up, let me, let me build into it. So Steve Ursig is currently 10-1. and one. He is 1-0 in the UFC, and he made his uh, debut at the last Canada card, which was uh, Nunez versus Aldana, and he was making a short nose debut. And you might be saying, what's the big, what's the big deal? A lot of people do. That's actually how... Uh, that's a very good way of getting into the UFC is accepting a short notice fight. Diego Lopez, really, really highly talked about prospect. I yeah, he's fighting on this card as well. I think against Pat Sabatini, big guy. I'm pretty high on uh, Diego Lopez as well. Huge finishing guy, really good Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy. Uh, I'm excited to see what he does this weekend. Uh, he debuted on short notice against Mavsar Evelov. Did really good against him. Still lost, but did really good. Had him in a heel hook at one point I believe and it was real he just made it really competitive but yeah no so a lot of people do that so yeah it's like what's the big deal well he's also debuting against a top 15 guy I believe uh well it's David Dvorak I believe David Dvorak was number 12 or number 13 I can't really remember which one it was I can't really find anywhere but you know debuting it's like wow that's kind of rough and then you might be countering right now. I don't. I'm trying to clear up everything with that. Of like, yes, I I thought about this video for a while. Uh, he was on a two fight losing streak. Well, it's not like he was losing the cans. He lost to uh, uh, Mat Mateus Nicolau, who pretty top guy. He just lost to Brandon Royval, who is fighting for the flyweight title. Let's not forget that he's he's a top guy. And Manel Cop. Manel Cop is really good. I know his last fight was not the best one of that, but still really good of that. He's on a win streak right now. He might be fighting Kai Kara France, and we're all really excited for that. Now, to fully follow up with that, so, you know, it's two-fight losing streak. He was, I believe, 3-2 and two in the UFC at that point, but he was on a pretty good win streak before that, and, you know, it's just like there's there's levels to the game, but he is a, he was clearly a top-15 guy. He just so happened to be uh, Eastern European, which is why uh, Lucas Tracy doesn't like him. Uh, but, you know, it's like, oh, you know, he loses to him, but he made the fight competitive. What's the big deal? Oh, he didn't lose to him. He beat him. Very convincingly, actually. Like, I'd say two to one on rounds. You could argue three. You could argue three rounds, but I said two to one. 
of that, and it was a very it was a very good fight. It was very clearly that he won. I didn't. There was no arguments of robbery. No one was saying, "Oh, robbery! Oh, biggest robbery! Oh, Steve Versig looked trash." And mind you, he made this on a week's notice. He just beat a top fifteen guy on a week's notice. Now that all equates to being bad in uh, Lucas Tracy's opinion or overrated. Like, what the fuck do? Okay, what's being good mean you? Like, you're saying, like, I like Diego Lopez. Let me put this clear. I like Diego Lopez. He kind of, he he lost that fight. Clearly lost that fight. He had some good submission attempts in there that were pretty close. But he lost that fight clearly. Same exact thing of that. He beats a Russian dude of that. Why is he not overrated? Why is he not of that? And let's put it like this. From what I've been seeing, uh, Steve Ersteg had a kickboxing background in that. He's a really good submission expert. He only has a couple decision wins in his career, but, you know, Lucas Tracy thinks, you know, oh, he's just gonna, he's a decision person, he's not gonna, he's a point fighter and all that stuff. Like, no, you clearly are not, don't know who this guy is, or any of that stuff, and that's okay if you don't know who he is. You don't need to know every single guy in that. But for a person who is very colloquial known as the world's greatest casual, you sure like to act like you aren't one, which... You know, I'm not trying to do the thing of like, oh, say you're casual without saying you're casual because I'm gonna be honest, I kind of forgot about Steve Ersig after that uh, card. Just ha- hadn't seen much about him. <clears throat> He's finally coming back. But I was aware how good it is. When his name got announced for fight, I was like, oh crap, yeah, no, that guy did really good in that. I'm actually kind of, that brought more hype to it than when it got announced. But also, mind you, Lucas Tracy didn't even name David Dvorak. He just said some random uh, Eastern European guy. And basically equated that to, like, oh, he just fought some random dude, a random bum on there. Like, not even announcing that, oh, this guy is in the top 15. And he's only one to know in the UFC. He beat a top 15 guy. I believe he's number 14 in the division right now. It's either 14 or 15 as of right now of that. And he also, let's mind this. He's picking uh, Alessandro Costa. Alessandro Costa is one and one in the UFC. He lo- he lost to Amir Albazi, and I know you're gonna say, "Oh, Amir Albazi's pretty good with that." Of that, like, I mean, a lot of people, including me, thought that Kai Car France beat him very convincingly and kind of exposed him. Which, yeah, but you know, Kai Car France is still pretty good. Kai Car France, or sorry, Amir Albazi has horrible stand up, and he's piecing up Alessandra Costa. Let's put. Let me say that again. He is piecing up Alessandra Costa, something that uh, Lucas Tracy fails to mention because you know why why would he need to name it with that he already has his opinion preset but he's saying that and he completely just diminishes everything about Steve Ursig. and now I'm not even the biggest Steve Ursig fan I literally could tell you nothing about this guy other than the fact that he beat David Dvorak and he submitted Shannon Ross before Shannon Ross was in the UFC he fought for eternal MMA I know that but if you're from Australia and you want to be you want to be shit or you sorry you want to be the shit you're going to fight internal MMA because I th- believe that's the biggest promotion there. I don't know. I don't really pay attention to Australian MMA. <clears throat> but, like, a bunch of guys there. Volkanovski, I believe Israel Adesanya may have had a couple fights there. Maybe Robert Whitaker, I believe. Tai Tuivasa, maybe. Shannon Ross, as I said. I know Shannon Ross isn't good. But, he. I mean, he made it to the UFC at one point with that. And Steve Ursaic beat him pretty, pretty quickly and pretty convincingly. So that still means something. And... I get what you're going to say, like, oh, well, he clearly didn't know what he was talking about for that. Yeah, well, he sure acted like he knew about that, and he still made it, because he doesn't do every, he doesn't talk about every single fight on the card, and he doesn't need to do that. We have the MMA guru for that. But even the MMA guru knows that Steve Ursaig is good. He even said, he sung his praise, like, man, this guy's really good. I know he said that, uh, and I'm going to reference it now, because I thought it was pretty funny. He was saying that, uh, Steve Ursaig just kind of looks like the type of guy that's going to get KO'd in a funny way. And after he said that, I looked, I had a picture pulled up of him, and I couldn't have agreed more because he just, I don't know how to describe it. Just look at him and tell me you don't see that. But in my opinion of that, I think Lucas Tracy really just showed his, how how his bias and he kind of tried to play it off like oh maybe i'm just biased of that like he does that anytime there's like a take of that that he really doesn't know that much about and my opinion what i noticed is i think he's comparing it to uh garam kutataledze who he does not like either he is very uh biased against garam and i mean to be fair garam 
was heavily overrated with that. But, you know, he's like, oh, both of them beat a top 15 guy on short notice uh, with that. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. But Garam arguably lost that fight. I actually, because I wasn't a fan of MMA by the time that fight happened yet. Or I wasn't really watching it, so I didn't know about this fight. But I finally watched it about a couple months ago, and I was like, I thought uh, that was a robbery. Like, a slight robbery, even. But, like, it was a close fight. <clears throat> there was no argument. Steve Ursig did not uh, rob uh, David Dvorak with that. And he just has such a huge bias against these Eastern European guys. I remember, I don't remember which card it was, but it's the card that had Grom versus Elvis Brenner. And he was... I mean, I think that was the only real... Because he had a bunch of these, like, really hot takes about these, like, Russian, Eastern European fighters where he's like, oh, yeah, they're all getting exposed and only one of them, I believe, was correct, and that was Garam losing to Elvis Brenner. Now, I believe Garam was winning that fight against Elvis Brenner before he got KO'd, and it was a war. Here's the thing. He doesn't even... He treated... He was at, talking about Elvis Brenner as if Elvis Brenner is not good. Like, did you just see what he did in his most recent fight? Uh, literally KOs a dude brutally with that. This guy is good. So, you know, he's a top guy. Now, do I think Garam is championship material? No, I think this guy gets injured way too much, takes too much of a break with that. Kind of, he's well-rounded, but he isn't really good, if that makes sense. He's kind of like Marvin Vittori, but kind of kind of worse. I, I, I don't know. I Maybe, I don't know. We just don't know. But for a big thing of that was also, he was talking about, uh, Renat Fakratanov. I don't really, it's a hard name to pronounce versus Kevin Lee. Now, obviously I know Renat did not look good in his last fight with the striking. He has horrible striking and he's like, Oh yeah, Kevin Lee's going to beat him, bro. Kevin Lee couldn't beat a geriatric fucking, uh, Diego Sanchez with that, who had a staph infection. I believe he couldn't beat him. He couldn't beat D rod. He couldn't beat any of these guys. He does not a good striker any of that, and he's like, oh yeah, Kevin Lee's gonna lose that, completely kind of ignores the fact that he got that one completely wrong, that, you know, Kevin Lee got submitted in 55 seconds after getting fucking, I think he got dropped in that, so he's got a very big bias about that, he'll ignore any of these takes that he gets, like, really wrong, which is a lot of them, this guy can't pick fights to save his life, but, you know, I'm just talking about this, and I wanted this uh, video to be about Steve Ersig, to be the main point of it, but that take just really annoyed me, and Mind you, I am not a big Steve Ersteg fan. I really did not think of him that much until this, well, the Matt Schnell fight got announced. He kind of just was in the back of my head. I wasn't really thinking of him. And then he came back and I'm like, oh yeah, that guy's actually really good. He's already in the top 15. He could he could do some damage. And then he's had a good, he had an amateur career. I believe he went like six and one in it. So he's experienced. He's only 28. So he can improve. He can get better. <clears throat> he's not even in his like, full on peak yet and he already beat David Dvorak but literally I'm sorry I just don't like Lucas Tracy and you know maybe that's my bias maybe that just annoyed me more because it was just a really bad Lucas Tracy pick but there haven't been that many Lucas Tracy picks recently that have made me want to make a video like this right now so I don't know this guy really and I might make a full video on him because it's really him and it's MMA Joey that really annoy me in this community MMA Joey, probably more. Okay, I'm not going to... Let me not lump uh, Lucas Trace in there. Lucas Trace seems like a nice guy. Or he might be a nice guy. He's kind of one-dimensional and talking-wise. It's just catchphrase, wobblestone, cobblestone knees. Uh, getting the walker out for all these guys of that. Talking about that, he does all this stuff. He steals from MMA Guru. He's all, he's that, but he, he might be a good guy. But his real only thing is trying to sell a cookbook that I don't know if anyone's ever actually bought. But he's at least not MMA Joey. We can all say that, right? If you've seen the... I didn't really watch all of it, but I at least found the clip of him talking about uh, Jamal Hill. Of that, he's such a little bitch. Of that, he's defending Ariel Helwani, of all people. It's so fucking funny. And he's got such that where he... He literally is Ariel Helwani, but just fatter. Of that, of trying to race me. I think like, oh, they hate Izzy because he's racist. At least Lucas Tracy hasn't done that. And... My opinion will at least say where that where I'm talking shit on him right now because I really just don't like him or his video that his takes of that he's kind of annoying and that stuff. But he's at least not MMA Joe or MMA Joe. He generally has a very punchable face. But anyways, that's kind of it. I think Lucas Tracy kind of just needs to shut up sometimes of his takes. 
of that or do more research or don't talk about it at all because that would be great for all of us. But yeah, that's about it. I just kind of wanted to talk about that. I mean, I'm upload I'm uploading more, which is good. I'll at least say Lucas Tracy uploads a lot more than I do. But, you know, they're not really that good of videos. Mine aren't either, but I'm also a college kid. So, you know, that's a thing. But that's about it. Bye.